talking about labor of love labor in love and you know many of us don't really discuss many of us don't really discuss the see if we can get a little bigger many of us often don't discuss the Okay, you, you guys can see it here, but we're going to have to add, you know, put it in the video for you when we, we do our editing. Uh, nevertheless, we want to talk about labor, labor, labor and love. Because, you know, Jesus Christ was delivered through a human process. Amen? Amen. Just like all of us were born, our parents... The seed was planted, the daddy planted the seed, and mommy carried it for nine months, and then it was time to deliver. Now, we want to talk about labor, the first stage. First stage of labor, when you start having contractions that cause changes. So, Mary is carrying Jesus for the nine months. And then, you know, we don't have details in the Bible per se, but we're going to safely assume that she has gone into contractions, early contractions, which are like the early, the early pains of the childbirth. Amen? 
And given the origin of how Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, you know where Mary lived in Nazareth with uh, Joseph. They were a couple. They were engaged. But they had never known each other, meaning there was, there was never any sexual activity between them. So for the angel to visit Mary and tell her, you are going to carry a child. The Holy Spirit is going to conceive a child with you. And then he visits Joseph and he tells him, you are going to be the father of this child. Think of all of the confusion. I'm not crossing you, but all oh, Joseph would be, would be able to be the father. This is what we're getting to. A supernatural God who does supernatural things. Amen? Amen. Uh, this is what a lot of people have difficulty with. Because God incarnate, God the supernatural, almighty God. God with whom nothing is impossible needed to have a son who was pure without sin so he could not have been born into or through a vessel or through a woman who was sinful so to speak you understand he could not have been it could not, because remember, we are born in sin and shaken and iniquity. So Mary and Joseph would have come along after Adam and Eve. They would have been descendants from that time. Born in sin, Mary and Joseph. But Jesus, who is the only begotten Son of God, being born, had to be born of a virgin. Somebody who had never, ever no, no, man. You see the beginnings of perfection there. So he had to. She. He had to have been born through a woman who was pure. Who was pure. Who was pure. That's the beginning of the process there. And because he's coming from God, he's coming from God. So she would not have been impregnated in the normal process, which is, you know, what? sexual relations between, because God is God. And there is no sin in God. God cannot deal with sin. Sin cannot be in his presence. Sin is not a part of him. Remember when Jesus was on the cross and they had crucified him? And at one point he shouted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that point was when all the sin of the world was on him. And because his father, who knew no sin, who knows no sin, God is holy, God is pure, God is righteous, he could not be a part of Jesus at that point in time. And so Jesus would have felt the separation. Amen? Amen. So similarly, Jesus is going to be born of a virgin, a woman who is pure, a woman who has never had sexual relations. She knows nothing of the sort. She literally is a virgin in all instances. And so that begins the supernatural process of purity. So she's impregnated. And then she goes through the entire process her, you know her tummy probably gets big and um, you know she shows all of the physical attributes of a pregnant woman a woman who's carrying and then she goes into contractions contractions that let her know that it's time and then we know the story Joseph engaged to this woman not married yet all of a sudden she is pregnant there is some difficulty in the area where they're living because in those days i believe if you were if you committed um, sexual fornication there would have been some punishment and mary would have been made ashamed her family would have disowned her so many things would have come out of that incident had 
their stead in the area. Amen? So God has set it up in such a way that they have to leave where they are. Okay? And travel to another place. They have to leave Nazareth and travel to another place. And in that time, because I guess she's getting heavy, so she's on a donkey and he's walking with her. Thank God for the Josephs in this world. So, oh, so thank, what thank, was Joseph's reaction to, to all of this? Well, Joseph was, he, after the, the, the uh, well, before the angel visited him, he would have been completely perplexed. Because he has never known this woman, but here she is saying that she's pregnant. So he would have gone through a whole set of, can I really do this? What is th This is going to shame me and my family. This is even going to put me in trouble because they're going to say that I did or something. But the angel visited him and gave him a word about it. And he was obedient. And so he took Mary and the child, just like the angel told him. And they had traveled. And they stopped at several places, hotels, guest houses, to see if they could find room in there so that she could rest. Because I guess she's near her term. Right? And we know the story. They were told the inn is full. There's no room in the inn. There's no room in the inn. Imagine a woman who is near to delivery time and they're traveling trying to get to a place. So Joseph must have been having some frantic thoughts and frantic feelings because he didn't want his child to be delivered alongside the road. So he plods on and he plods on. But God was with them the whole time because the load that she is carrying is so precious. It is so precious. She already knows. She says, Remember in her discourse, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. For he hath regarded herself as a lowly maiden to carry his son, the Son of God. She was prepared. So this Lord, they know they've got God's protection. And where did they end up? In Bethlehem. In a manger. In a manger. With ox and ass and sheep and cows and and um, I dare say yard fowls like we would have chickens, um, everything that you can imagine. Not to mention there might have been some feces there from the animals. True. Because a stable isn't necessarily a clean place. It's not a clean there might have been a horse there too. Some yeah, horses. Yeah, horses too. Okay, so the most unlikely place is where she is. And where she has, and that's where they're, that's the only place they have found room. Right. And there is significance in that as well. He came as a king in a human person, born not in a hospital or not in a birthing room or in a birthing station, but in a yard, in a manger yeah. with animals that were smelly. Ox and ass and hair and, 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 and feces. I mean, he became as lowly as lowly could be, but he's coming into this world as a king. Born a king. He was already programmed. Already programmed to be a king. And that tells us so much. That tells us so much that he was willing to to go through that even though he was a king. He was humble enough. His circumstances became so humble that we could connect with that. And what that says to us is that we can be plucked from down in the mangers of life. We can be plucked from among the yard fowls and the chickens and the horses with the smelly feces and the and the and the the straw and the hair and the sheep manure, manure. Mm -hmm. we can be plucked from down there, amen? amen. And become as kings and priests. So early contractions. She's going through the process. Process. The the little pains come, and then they become a little bit more frequently, and then you know. It doesn't say who was there to help deliver, except that Joseph was there. So we don't know that there was even a midwife. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We don't even know there was a nurse. 
God Almighty. They didn't mention that. God Almighty. So it must have been just Joseph there at the birthing, birthing process. Kudos to him if it was just him. <laughs> what he must have gone through seeing the birth of a child. A child that he is the father, but he's not the father, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what I mean. And that this child is, I mean, this child is larger than life. This is the king of kings, the savior of the world, the Messiah. So that says a lot to us. The mangers of life we can be plucked from. And we can go on to become, to be birthed as kings. In fact, the Bible says that. We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, heirs to the throne of God, to the throne of Jesus. We are heir, co-worker, co-heirs with Christ Jesus, our brother. We can go from the pit to the palace through salvation and because of his birth. He rescues us from the mangers of life. After a while, we've left the yard foes behind. <laughs> the sheep manure and everything that goes with the manger. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so through salvation and through his birth, we would have become kings and priests. Just like he was born a king, we have now stepped into royalty as well through salvation. So this was really a labor. Imagine her pushing. So we got the first stage, which is where... They go from just red, you know, bit by bit, then to a bit more frequent. Now, similarly, we're laboring in the vineyard. The vineyard, of course, is the world. Salvation having come to us, we are now in labor too. We are working towards a representation or a replica or a duplication of what Christ has done. He has been born into the world to save us. Now that we are saved and we are born again, we are now sharing the message of what he has come for, what he did for us, bringing us out of the mangers of life. So your responsibility now is to bring others out of the manger of life. And that becomes a labor of love because a lot of the times you're weary a lot of the times you really don't feel like it a lot of the time it comes with rejection it comes with um loneliness it comes with um separation sometimes you are you are separated from your own family there is no support out here in the vineyard sometimes in, even in the very kingdom there is no help except God. So here you have early birth pains. Early birth pains as you're co-laboring. I just discussed some of the things that you're going to go through. And so this, let's go to the second stage of labor. The second stage of labor. We're going to go to the next, um, the next stage. And that first stage, by the way, too, is also called active labor. So in the vineyard, when we are out there in the trenches and we're trying to get people in, we're active in that. Amen? Amen. It is the zeal. Like we read earlier in Isaiah, it's the zeal of the Lord. It's the oomph, the, 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 the gas, the gasoline. That is really driving yeah, us yeah. to keep going at it. It's why you can you can stand in your home and have church by yourself. True. Because you understand it is not unto men, it is unto God. Okay? okay. Now, here we go. Second stage of labor. Second stage of labor. We are getting there.
Second stage, pushing. So Mary is carrying him now. She has her early labor pains. And now she feels him about to make a move. So she begins to push. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is now being delivered. And the pushing process comes with pain. Women will tell you that they have spoken in different languages during that time. Amen? <laughs> the second stage, pushing. So she is pushing. No doubt Joseph is holding her hand and he is just as he's a bit, probably a bit terrified. Because we don't know if anybody else was there. Sure, so this process has is probably going on with just the two of them there and the animals. And the animals can't do much but holler. <laughs> and they were probably hollering with her. Amen? Amen? So she is pushing and she begins to feel movement. Now in the vineyard when we are laboring, when we begin to push... Push also refers to that acronym. Pray until something happens. Push. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. So, when we begin to push in the vineyard, we're praying, we're fasting, we're in our word. There has got to be movement. There has got to be movement. Case in point, we prayed for that family last week, about two weeks ago. And then the father shows up for service. Praying until something happens. Push until something happens. A faithful wife and child. Pushing and praying until something happens. Because they understand the importance of the father being the head in the home. And that when he... When, when father falls apart, the whole ship begins to collapse. Because then the, the, the responsibility is transferred on the mother to keep that ship afloat. And that becomes double work. Difficult. Difficult tough. So they pushed and saw the results. Father came to service. Husband came to service. Amen? Amen. So in the vineyard, when we begin to push in that labor stage, something has to happen. There has got to be movement. That baby is now moving down in Mary's womb. And she moves and it moves and it moves. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Now there's a stage in that second area called crowning when the baby begins to move down. The crowning of the head. May the head appears. Amen? Amen. The head appears. Now lots of people don't, don't survive that. They end up on the floor of the delivery room fainting because that's where they're seeing now the baby for the first time and it's coming with all its gush and mush and blood and the placenta and everything else with it. The, the liquid it's been living in. It's coming out with that. Amen? Mm -hmm. So the head crowns. And what happens is the head is advancing down. And when it crowns, this is the time when the head becomes visible. Now, in the labor of love in the vineyard, we've pushed and pushed until we felt movement. Movement in the kingdom as in results are beginning to, we're seeing stuff begin to happen. And we don't let up the pushing because we've endured a lot. We've gone through all of the rejection and the this and the that and the loneliness and the walk and so on. And then the head appears. So with the movement now of the baby coming down, we've got this crowning head happening in the physical labor, but in the spiritual labor of love, the head, the prize appears. And that prize could be the soul that you've been going after. 
the breakthrough you've been waiting for in a particular situation. You've got the head crowning in the thing because you haven't given up. You have not stopped your labor. So if you haven't stopped your labor and you have been faithful and you're laboring in love because it's love really that's driving you and the zeal of God within you that's causing you to propel yourself forward, you haven't given up. You haven't given up. And here comes the crowning, the prize. And with the prize comes release. With the physical labor now, that's the biggest part now that's that's the, that's the biggest part of the of the delivery process now, the crowning of the head. You see the head coming, there's a lot of drama, a lot of excitement, and they're saying, Hold it, hold it, don't push, don't push, hold up, hold up, don't push. Okay, you can push now, and then they unwrap the cord or whatever is happening, and then they said, Okay, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, and whoosh, out comes baby Jesus. And the mother's entire body, having gone through that dramatic process, begins to relax, is free in the labor of love in the vineyard. The crowning head, the prize, there is absolute joy. Not to mention in the physical labor, because now she's got her baby. But the body itself has felt some freedom, amen? Mm -hmm. There's been some freedom. Because now that thing has been released. And now you can walk, you can walk in it, you can run in it, you don't need an umbrella. And when that happens... You don't care how much you have to labor, how many nights you don't sleep, how many days you don't eat, how much, how much, how much money you have, how many times you're, you're between blessings. You can't see an onion to skin, but you're pressing through, pressing through, pressing through. And there is absolute joy because you don't care about nothing else. Here's your prize. Here's your prize. Amen. And you mean, I mean, here in the physical, in the physical, in the drama of the delivery, the mother probably is thinking, out oh, at last. Free. Free. <laughs> <laughs> out at last. In the spiritual labor, we say, bless God. Thank you, God. There are some tears. There is some, especially like if a child has come home or a uh, Somebody that you were witnessing to for a long time has finally come home. At last. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's the second stage. Third stage, the placenta. Mary's uterus would have begun to contract again to go back to its normal state because it was a bit, it would have been stretch wide for delivery, right? And then you have the placenta in which the baby was living separates from the uterus and begun, begins to come out of the body. In the physical labor of love, that's in the that's in the physical labor of love. That's what's happening. In the spiritual labor of love, when you're in the vineyard, the moment that that person or that soul is set free, picture that the mangers of life that they were living in is now disconnected from that. But they have got to, now, now the, the, the ground has got to be worked. So there is care for the mother and so on. That placenta comes out. They tidy her up. They cut it at the, they cut the placenta off from which we have our navel. That's what's left. That's what would have connected us to her. So for as long as we live, we, we have that navel. It still, it still is sort of active because mothers will tell you that they feel things about their children as old as they are. Because that's what connected you to your mom. So they prepared Mary and stuff in the physical labor, and here is the, in the natural labor, there's a separation. A separation from, all of that comes out of the body, what the child lived in. And, it's, and, and you know, you can think of it like this, that person now, 
that was saved from by you being in the vineyard not giving up, they're now separated from their former life. Amen? Amen. They're separated from their former life and pulled out of the pit. So, in the spiritual as well, spiritual labor, after that baby has been born, quote-unquote, which is your soul that has been won. Now you've got to stay with them, work the work the ground through the word. Stay close with them so that they're not snatched by the enemy. You have to, you know, continue to encourage them because there will be moments that will come when they will want to throw in the towel. But you have got to be there because of the labor of love. You still have to work that ground and work that ground. And work that ground. Amen? Amen. So Jesus is delivered and he has come into this world to save us. He has come into this world to light our darkness because a lot of the time we didn't even know we were walking around in the dark. But here he is having come to having come to um Look back at that scripture again. 1 Corinthians 3 9. He has come here we go to lighten our darkness and that's what we celebrate at this time. We are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building, the body of Christ. And we are working with him. Okay? okay? We are working with him in the vineyard. We are laboring with him. We are co-laborers with him. He plants. We plant. And he does the watering. He does the watering. Amen? Amen? And then in the scripture, in Isaiah, we talked about, for unto us a son is born. This was part of the plan even before the new covenant came in. This is Jesus in the Old Testament. Unto us a son is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Rulership of everything on this planet will be on his shoulders. And we're getting now into the final stage of that, where he is coming to set up his permanent throne on earth, where we will dwell with him for all eternity. So from the cradle to the grave, to the cross, to the grave, to the resurrection. Us from the cradle to the cross where we die, to the grave, to salvation where we are resurrected with him. And we're in for the final thrust as well. A labor of love. She pushed that he would be born a light to our darkness. To pull us from the mangers of life. Where all manner of filth is where we would have existed. And so that's from where we came. And that's where we're no longer. But that we now labor in love. We labor in love. So we're not going to be distracted. We're not going to be denied. We're not going to be disillusioned. We're not going to be dissuaded. Dissuaded. We're not. There's so many knots. We're just not giving up. Jesus Christ says, and I'm going to leave you with this last picture. Let me just share it with 
those who are watching, maybe watching online. I'm going to show them, show it to them. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to show them this photograph that kind of says it all. Here we go. Okay. And it says there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because of the glare. It says, don't you dare give up. And Jesus says, I loved you at your darkest, and I still love you now. Come home. Okay? So we bless God for his word today. And we're thankful for Mary and the... And the sacrifice that she made going through that delivery process on our behalf. And even as we labor in the vineyard, in the field out there, where there's millions upon millions of people who have not come in yet. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And the few of us have got to keep in there. Keep in there. Amen. So that wraps up our session for today. Before we go, we're going to collect our offering. We are going to just ask God again to remember in His kindness and mercy. Oh, Father God, Almighty God, we just come before your presence this afternoon, Lord God, and we are thanking you for yet another day where we can bask in your presence. You are exalted high above the earth, and your name is a strong tower unto which the righteous run in there, saith God. Today, Lord God, we thank you again that salvation has come to us and that you've called us and predestined us for such a time as this. And Father, as we bring these needs before you, our basket of prayer requests, Lord God, you know every note that is written here. You know every need that is written here, oh God. You know the thoughts of behind these needs even before they're asked. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we declare your unending abundance, your exceeding abundance, Lord God, and divine provision over these needs, Lord God. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, through your loving kindness and your tender mercy, that you remember every family that is represented here in these prayer needs, Lord God. Father, you said your arm is not too short that you would withhold any good thing from us, Lord God. For our, your thoughts toward us are thoughts of good, not of evil, not thoughts to harm us, but to bring us to an expected end. And so in the name of Jesus, we believe your report, Lord God, that these needs are met according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Father, this is but a part of the lives of these people, Lord God. 
and even as they make their petitions known to you, Lord God, may they know, Lord God, that you are their assurance. You, Lord God, are their provider. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're all things to them, O oh God. May they call upon you in their need and believe you for their need. Not look to the right or to the left, for you said in your word that they should look to the hills. We should look to the hills. From whence cometh our help? Our help cometh from you, O oh God. So today, Lord God, we thank you in advance. We claim the victory in these needs, Lord God. For you know what they are, Father God. For you are omnipotent. You are omniscient. You are omnipresent, O oh God. Today, Lord God, we remember those that are among us, Lord God, who are not well. Remember Sister Andrea, Lord God, and old Brother Cecil, Lord God. Remember Sister Tanya and the kids, Sister Sharon and the kids, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all of our brethren, our friends, and our associates, Lord God. We thank you, God, for our apostle, Lord God, even as you Hold her up. Bear her up, Lord God. And Pastor Sonia, Lord God, and the team in Rio Rancho, Lord God. We bless your name today, Lord God. Even as we go to our several homes in peace, may, may we be away from each other, but never away from your presence, oh God. We thank you, God. As you take us through this week, Give us traveling mercies. Give us divine favor, Lord God. Help us to hear from you only, Lord God. Let us not get frustrated, Lord God. But keep our hands to the plow, even as you should come soon to take us home. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Oh, 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 oh,